Hi everybody, I'm Terry Clark. I'm from the Central Florida Zoo and Botanical Gardens and I'm very happy to be joining you again this month. This month we're going to talk about our hurricane procedures that we all go through. Now some of the more comical things that you might find us doing Probably not comical at the time, but when we look back at it, we can laugh at it ourselves. Um, not too long ago, probably 15, 10 years ago, we didn't have too many concrete buildings here at the zoo. So when you were trying to relocate these animals to a safe zone, we had to use things like our bathrooms. So, you know, when you have birds, you don't really want to put them into a kennel. When we had African crane birds, they're really tall birds. They can't fit into a kennel. So we kind of just kind of put them in the girls' bathroom and let them live in the girls' bathroom for three or four days. They were happy with it. They didn't mind it a bit. You also have to think about our venomous reptiles. You don't want something happening to the herpetarium, like a tree falling on the building and maybe, you know, it cracking open and maybe damaging some of the venomous snake exhibits. We want to make sure that all those animals are contained and everybody's safe just in case something like that were to happen. So all our venomous snakes go into pillowcases, which they're perfectly content with. You know, they're fine. It's just like when we pull the sheets over our head, we can still breathe and everything. But then we do the extra step and we take that pillowcase and we put it into a rubber made trash can and we put the lids on top and then we bungee the lids onto the trash can itself. And that way if something were to happen to the building and the wind started blowing inside and started blowing those trash cans over, the lid is still going to be contained on top of that trash can and those snakes are not going to be able to escape. So we do try to look at every way possible to keep everybody safe, our staff and our guests. Now here at the zoo, we have unfortunately had to implement our hurricane protocol. If you remember back in 2004, we were hit with three severe hurricanes. Now that time for our zoo was probably the busiest time. And if you ask us about it today, we just kind of shrug and look and we don't want to talk about it because it was such a problem for us. Fortunately, we didn't lose any animals and uh, we didn't have any damage to any of our buildings, but we did have a lot of severe cleanup as a result of those hurricanes. So a lot of people want to know what do we do with the animals when we do have a hurricane? Well, part of the protocol is we have to identify which animals first need to be relocated out of their exhibits. So a lot of the animals like the large cats their exhibits have concrete dens attached. So we shift them into those concrete dens and they're perfectly safe in there to ride out any kind of a hurricane. Now these animals like these birds behind me, they obviously need to be relocated into a safe zone. And a safe zone for the zoo is any concrete building. So we have to gather a lot of kennels up that's probably one of our first 72 hour protocols is gathering all the kennels. It's a lot of work trying to get those kennels ready, trying to get water bottles ready, trying to get food ready, and then trying to get these animals inside some of these kennels that they don't want to go into because you have to remember when they see a kennel, they usually think they're going to the vet and that's usually not a thing that they enjoy doing. So when they see that kennel, we just kind of have to go with the flow, and especially when they see those nets, some of the primates, when they see the nets coming, oh my, they don't want to cooperate with us at all. So that's why we like to start 72 hours out. <laughs> Now, when we do have a hurricane, we try to evacuate everybody from the zoo, and that includes staff, but we don't leave the animals unattended. We do have a volunteer ride-out crew that has to stay here with the animals. We say it's volunteer because of the fact, you know, we don't want to force somebody to stay here at the zoo if you are too scared or you don't want to or you want to be at home with your family. Now, in the past, we've been very lucky with all our hurricanes. We have never lost an animal to a hurricane. We have had a lot of damage and lots of flooding at the zoo because we are in a wetland. Uh, it floods pretty easily, but it does dissipate pretty quickly as well. But we have had some damage to our boardwalks. We have had a lot of trees fall down. We've never lost a building. We've never lost an animal. So we're knocking wood. We're very happy about that.
All our special events are still on. The zoo is still open nine to five every day, including weekends. Make sure you come on out to, to join all the festivities we have coming up. Our Koki Festival in September. We've got a night hike coming up. That's a lot of fun. Also, if you've never been in the zoo at night, that is a tremendous a lot of fun because you get to experience the nocturnal animals. Those sleeping that you see during the day, well, at night they're up and moving around and making their vocalizations. That's a lot of fun to watch. So please come on out and visit us.